Okay, so now we're in the, the C120 and we're going to kind of walk and talk our way through the AC power system. And the boat's got two shore power plugs on the outside of the boat. Uh, one of them is for the house systems. The other one is an extra inlet for the air conditioning, one of the air conditioning units. Um, and when that power comes in, it's two 110 volt legs coming in, both 30 amp services. The reason we did the 110 amp um, services, man, is that those 50 amp shore power cords are so heavy and so bulky that a lot of the customers just can't stand using them. And so it's much easier to have two separate cords. And most of the time, they really only need one cord anyway. So it's in, when they're leaving the boat, it's running one air conditioner and their battery charger, and they don't even fiddle with the second cord. It's on the hot days, they bring out the second cord and get the second air conditioning running. So, um, but basically, power comes in just on the other side of this, comes into this AC distribution panel. And the reason we put the AC distribution panel right here is shore power comes in right there, plus the generator is down on the back deck right here. Rather than running all these wires all the way forward and all the way back, and then all the way over the boat, much easier to put it right closer to where the power comes in and or is available from the generator. So what I'm gonna do now is just a quick sketch of, I'm gonna try to overview what this all does and how it works. So we'll see what I can do here with a sketch pad, but essentially um, this is that L-shaped panel that we've got right there. And then the side of the boat's right here. And you've got your two shore power inlets here, okay? And if you look at these panels, the panels themselves are labeled. Um, there's a whole bunch of them here. But if you look at the top part of the panel, it's actually labeled over here with what it is. So this one is 120 volts AC bus one. This is 120 volts AC bus two. So that would be where the shore power cords are coming in. They come into here and they come into here. And then, um, uh, this is a second one for bus two. And then if you rotate around, this is coming off of bus one. So the power comes through these breakers here, comes over into bus one, and bus two comes over into bus two. And then if you go a little farther right, you see the inverter, inverter? Mm -hmm. These are AC outlets that um, if you're, if you're t plugged into shore power, power comes in, goes through the inverter, and then comes into these 110 outlets. If you aren't plugged into shore power, then the inverter can take 12 volts and turn it into 110. Mm -hmm. um, let's see if I can sketch that up a little bit better here. So, okay. so this is um, house, and this is uh, air conditioning, and it's only one of the air conditioners. And so essentially this comes over and comes into bus one, number one, and this is number two, and two comes in and does that. There is a panel in between here, a switch in between, that's called transfer, okay? And a lot of folks don't get what transfer is about, but basically what it does is if you only have one shore power connected, it lets you pair these together. And you can run, so then the power would come from, you know, basically all the power, everything can run off of just the one outlet if it's on transfer. But if you try to run the boat on transfer and you run both the air conditioners, mm -hmm. an AC unit here and the AC unit that's up in the front of the boat at the same time while it's on transfer, it's too much draw for um, just the one 30 amp service. Mm -hmm. And even though it says 30 amps, you really only draw about 24 to 26 amps. If you get any higher than that, the cords will get warm and uh, the breakers will start to pop. So don't try to draw 30 amps or 32 amps from a, a, uh, uh, a 30 amp breaker. It just doesn't work very well. But what it does do is, you know, if you turn off this air conditioner and you're on transfer, you could be sleeping up here in the master stateroom just running off one air conditioner. Right. And a lot of times people will do that. Um, we had a boat this summer where the customer didn't want to hook. It was kind of not... He didn't hook up both shore power cords. He ran it on transfer and he wasn't charging very much. So he was able to get both air conditioners to run off of uh, one shore power cord. Um, of course, then what happened is it was a super hot day. Everybody on the dock, um, you know, they'd started at 120 volts in the morning, but by the time afternoon came along and everybody was running their air conditioner and he was at the end of the dock, he was only at about 106 volts. Mm. Okay. And, um, and which means that as the voltage drops, the amperage goes up. 
okay? And so to get the energy that the air conditioners wanted, they mm -hmm. were drawing gobs of amps. Pretty soon, he actually melted um, inside his switching here, he melted the breaker and, and uh, it just got hot and hot and hot and he started smelling plastic. And mm -hmm. so, um, you know, the breaker failed and melted and, and, and then everything shut down and then he was very hot. Yes. Okay. So it would have been a lot simpler if he had gotten an extra shore power cord out and hooked it up and, um, um, and just run both air conditioners the way it was really originally designed. So, so basically, again, the way it works is shore power comes in. Uh, do I have another color? I do have another shore mm -hmm. color. So, so for shore one, uh, which is right here, one, the power comes in, comes through, comes into shore one, and then from shore one, it comes around and goes over to the ones that are labeled shore one here, mm -hmm. the breakers that are labeled for shore one. And then from those breakers, then it goes out uh, all those breakers, power goes out to the different locations in the boat. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so that's just kind of an overview of what's happening here and why we have two shore power cords. Um, the other thing that's here is um, uh, what's called a, a slide switch. So right now we're on shore power and you can see the green light mm -hmm. and, and the reverse polarity light is not on. Um, if we want to switch to run things off the generator, you have to turn off the um, shore power cord and slide that down and then see where it says off right here? Mm -hmm. Then you're gonna push this on and you know, then everything will power up through the generator, right. okay? Mm -hmm. And so um, that's the basic idea there. And, and, and this is set up so that you can't have both your generator and your shore power breakers on at the same time. Mm -hmm. If you're gonna start the generator, the thing to do is make sure uh, that you've turned, you know, turn this power off from shore, turn off this, and then start the generator and let it warm up before you give it a big load. Okay. Um, so the way to wreck any engine is to run it with a heavy load on it when it's cold. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start the generator and you want to turn off the breaker for the power coming out of the generator so that you're not loading it up when it's cold. Then you come down here and just simply tap the switch, the light comes on, let go. And then it'll do a little check and pressure up things, and then it should start. Might take a second. See that? Mm -hmm. Can you hear it? I'm not sure. Yep. It's a very quiet generator, made by Kohler, 6KW. Um, and so we'll let that warm up a minute, and then we'll talk about some of the other things here. These are all warnings that we have to put on the boat to be NMMA certified. And... Uh, so the generator just stopped again, and that might be just because it's cold. For about 20 or 30 seconds, then it stopped. And now it appears that the remote switch control isn't working. And sometimes the switch is, you know, the control between inside the boat and outside will get mixed up. We're gonna go down and take a look at the display and see what it says. Says is seawater pressure low shut down. It's probably because the ball valve is shut. <laughs> that might be me. So I think let's see. Let's start here. And so I turned it off. Okay, so we tried to start the generator and it ran for about 20 seconds and then it shut off. And we came back here and we'll take this to show you. Um, there's a little display right here. And um, that display, when we came down here, said that it was uh, basically that the seawater, it wasn't getting any seawater, which is pretty cool. The sense, it sensed that it didn't get seawater and it shut down. So we came down and, and sure enough, the ball valve here, was in the off position. So then we opened the ball valve and um, it took us a couple of seconds to figure it out. But when it's coming up with that seawater default on the display, all you do is tap this round knob here and then it'll let you scroll. Is it cleared or not? And you just rotate it one click and it says clear, yes. And then you tap it and then it clears the air and then you can push start and it begins to run again. So that was all there was to it. And it's kind of cool that the generator knew that 
um, it wasn't getting any salt water and it shut off before it could damage anything. Perfect. Yeah, that's great. That's right. what it's supposed to do. Good. Okay, so while I was doing the guy thing, Amanda got the owner's manual out and uh, we got to the same answer at about the same point. I just kind of winged it with the buttons and she got to page 29 and found controller resetting following system fault shutdown. So it's a great, great owner's manual. The information's there, but it's also simple enough that you could figure it out. All right, let's continue with our, our talk here. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is start the generator again and basically you gotta hold it for a second or so. One, two, it lights up. Then it goes through this process with the computer thinking about what it's gonna do and then it'll start in a second. Hear it cranking? Mm -hmm. And now it's running, okay? So now you see, look here, the display is uh, 123 volts uh, from the generator, 60 hertz. And because I have the breaker off, there's no draw right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on because I'm not gonna run the air conditioners right away. I just wanna show you how this all works. So now you can see that it's actually putting some power out. Mm -hmm. Think of amps as the meter for how much flow is coming through. The volts is the pressure, how much pressure I've got. Right now we're only using one amp because the batteries are full and there's only just a few lights on. So. Um, so that, at this point, the power is coming through this breaker, and when you're on generator, it powers shore um, one and two when you're in this breaker mode here, because there's two breakers here, okay? And if we want to switch back, I can even leave the generator running. I can disconnect here, slide that up, and now I've got power from the shore coming through the meter here, okay? And if we have the second shore power cord connected, it would be kind of similar reading here and you'd get the same amperage. You know. So when you come to your boat and before you leave your boat, if you've got the shore power here and the amperage is reading no amps, then you don't have any of the breakers on. You're not drawing anything. So before you leave, to double check to make sure you're running things, not only do you have to have voltage here, but you have to actually see some amperage flowing, okay? Okay. Good. So. Let's go through some of the other things that are here. I'm going to leave the generator to warm up a little here because you don't want to start it up and then shut it off right again. So uh, other things that are kind of fun. So if now we're over one click farther over and you see the switch that's called transfer mm -hmm. and transfer is on right now and there it's off. If I slide this up and turn on these air conditioners. Um, you know, we're, well, that's the position for when you're going to get power from the uh, um, shore power cord and there's no power coming in, so it's not going to do anything. So we basically do that. When this is in transfer now, the power is just coming out of this side and everything that's labeled two over here. So this stuff here, which is the salon air conditioner, is now going to go through transfer and I can actually turn the salon air conditioner on. Okay. You hear it come on? Yep. And look at how the volt amperage is coming up over here. Yep. Okay. 6.7 now. Yeah, and it was at like 1 amp. And once the compressor comes on, that's just the fan. It starts off with the fan mode. Once the compressors come on, it'll actually do more, uh, more draw. So that's just kind of how that works. Um, now, if transfer is off, it isn't going to work. Uh -huh, I you see. see? Mm -hmm. Okay. But everything that's run, hooked to shore one, which are the things that are over here, so battery charger is on right now. The inverter is on too. And that is, um, and that's kind of confusing because the inverter is your main battery charger as well. That's the 100 amp charger that charges the house battery bank. The other battery charger charges the start battery and the um, generator battery, mm -hmm. okay? Um, engine room outlets, those would typically, you know, be for running heat warm, keeping the engine room warm it in the winter. Um, Cité outlets, water heater. This is a big load. Watch when I turn that on. Okay. Now oh, this amperage hops up. Oh yeah. So that's fifteen hundred watts, like a big hair dryer. Yep. Okay. And so it's typically off when you're not using hot water. The refrigerator typically gets left on. On my boat, I leave all the spares on just because I only want to see 
the anomaly that I actually care about. Mm -hmm. Some people turn off all the spares. It really doesn't hurt to leave the spares on because they're just literally, the power stops right there at the breaker. It isn't mm -hmm. going anywhere, mm -hmm. okay? And so I typically leave the spares on and the things that I actually want off are off. Water heater I'm gonna turn off because I don't want it. Mm -hmm. And these other spares I usually leave on too, okay? Yeah. Um, let's see here, other things about this. So remember with the stuff that's coming through the inverter, um, if you've got a, let's say that you've been using the, the forward outlets and stuff and you have an electric heater plugged in and then you unconnect from shore power, the inverter is going to try to keep running that electric heater mm -hmm. and you won't get any big warning until your house battery, because it's going to draw tremendous power. Yeah, it goes way down. And it'll pull and flatten out your, your batteries fairly quick. So when you're, you know, going to plug in a heater to a outlet that can run off the inverter, just be aware that it automatically does that mm -hmm. and so it can be a problem. The other thing we do here is this outlet down here, and this one isn't labeled, but one side of it is hooked up to the inverter and the other side is not, and there's usually a labor layer, it must have come off. But uh, the idea is that you can have a heater plugged in here underneath the dinette um, and uh, have it run off just the shore power and mm -hmm. not have it connected to the inverter unless it's a conscious choice. Okay. So um, let's see, what else about this area? Um, one thing that's kind of not intuitive is this um, meter itself um, that gives you your AC volts actually gets its power from the house battery banks. Okay. It's a 12 volt meter that measures 120 volt power. So if you have the house batteries off, then uh, this meter doesn't actually work. So mm -hmm. kind of an anomaly to know about. Uh, another thing that's kind of here is your light switches for the overhead. Mm -hmm. um, you can tap them and you can see here that if you want you can dim them too and see how they're slowly getting dimmer oh, yeah. and you can stop it at any point. The other switches are um, other uh, lights in here it's kind of hard to see and then the fourth one is the ones on the floor. So hard to see. That's all pretty obvious kind of stuff mm -hmm. but good to turn them off when you're not using them. I mean, today because it's so dark we're going to turn everything up to full bright. Um, another thing that people don't realize is that this light here actually has a little tiny button here, okay? Mm -hmm. And that, if it's a, again, it's a deal where you can turn it brighter and then stop at a certain point. Oh, okay. Okay, so there's off. And, and if you, you know, you can basically play with it and get different amounts of light. Mm -hmm. Tap it again and it'll stop at that level. Um, see how it's kind of, oh, yeah. yeah, kind of fun. Um, but people miss that switch and they'll hunt all over the place. <laughs> and, and, uh, that little toggle switch there. Yeah. Not toggle, but button. Right, right. Okay. Um, another thing that is important to know, and this is a typical Saturday morning phone call for a new owner, is the, uh, the, uh, I'm going to put something underneath that. It wants to rattle with the generator running. Actually, the generator can turn off now. Um, another thing that people miss is that these outlets up here at the um, at the galley, uh, the 110 volt outlets, which do run off the inverter, there's a uh, down here is a. Uh, uh, there's a GFI for the uh, outlets. For the outlet. Okay. So this outlet right here mm. is the power comes out of the breaker up there, comes down to this outlet, goes through the GFI, and then from this GFI, it powers up the other outlets up above. And because there's outlets near the sink up there, you know, every occasionally somebody will get water in something and it'll trip mm -hmm. the GFI. Mm -hmm. And this is the reset point for it. And man, I've had owners hunt all over and go boating for days with no outlets up there, not realizing how to reset it. How do we reset that? It's right there. Okay, so, good trick. Uh, another thing that's good while we're down here, notice the light comes on automatically, mm -hmm. is uh, I'll send a, pin this down here. So right down here, 
is a control knob and that round knob down there is adjustable and that's for a uh, hot water mixer valve. So basically when you're cruising down the bay um, and the engine is heating up your hot water tank, which is right there, the uh, it gets really warm, 180 degrees or it can get to 170, which is hotter than you really want. So that mixer valve lets you adjust how much cold water mixes with your really hot hot water to you know come out to the shower and things like that. Not get scalded. Right. But to adjust it, you have to undo the Phillips screw right there on the end of the cap, and then you pull the cap out, and then you can rotate it one way or the other if you don't want the hot water one way or the other if you don't like it. Um, up here is a pressure accumulator that um, basically smooths out the flow of water from the pumps, and then you can see the ball valves here uh, let you shut off hot and cold if you're going to work on and service your fresh water system. Um, just other things in here are through hulls and stuff like that. Nicely done. Notice that we actually sound insulate both sides of the bulkhead there so that it's really quiet, you know, when with you're sleeping in here earth. with the air yeah. conditioner. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, there is a drain valve here on the uh, end of the hot water heater and some of the fittings there. It's just good to see what where do you work on. Um, also, that's where the heater element for the hot water is. And if you uh, drain the hot water uh, for winter time and then come in the spring and turn on the hot water breaker with no water in the mm -hmm. tank, you'll melt off the uh, heating, heating element in there. Mm -hmm. So you got to always have water in your tank when you're going to uh, turn on the heating element. All right, there's that back. Okay. Um, other things that are down here that people don't always notice, there's a... Um, a carbon monoxide sensor right here mm -hmm. and this has still got the protective cover on it which isn't exactly the way it should be you want to show that yeah so uh <laughs> get it the other way around um so that's a carbon monoxide sensor and then right above it is a uh a fire extinguisher and you can see that it's got the uh proper pressure and, and your gas is good to too. go this is the um control for the propane there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, the power the breaker to it is on and uh, we'll show that in a second here um, this is the hour meter and the on off switch for the Kohler generator um, the other thing that's down here on the floor uh, the carbon is a propane sniffer sensor hmm there it is okay so right here is a propane sniffer sensor and that's tied to this computer right up here and since this is the low spot in the boat it's kind of a space where the propane might collect and so uh, the one thing to know about these sensors is just like the carbon monoxide sensor all these sensors have um, rare earth metals in them that are real sensitive mm -hmm. and uh, you can't use things like simple green and which you really would want to use on your wood anyway and spray simple green in here also if somebody sprays that suntan lotion it's a, in a can oh in a can that mm -hmm. stuff destroys the teak it yeah. destroys these sensors really quickly mm -hmm. so you got to be careful which you clean the boat with um with these sensors so they cost about 35 bucks and they take about an hour to change or maybe less but still it's not it's just better not to use those things inside the boat. In fact, I won't let anybody use that spray suntan lotion on a boat. They can stand on the dock or go in yeah. the dinghy, but I don't want it on my gel coat either. Yeah, I was about to say, it kills the yeah. gel coat as well. So here's a uh, smoke detector, just a normal smoke detector, um, and you should change the batteries annually. Um, but there's lights and, uh, you know, overhead lights here. There's reading lights up in the front of this as well. And then there's a big port light here too. Um, and the curtain is in. I usually leave oh, that nice. off. Uh, it's an awfully nice um, uh, space, really. And you've got your own window and vent and big windows and a nice shelf. And there's room to store stuff down into this uh, market area here, too. And there's lights here, too. Um, let's show that real quick. These are the natural lights mm -hmm. inside the boat. And then you can see the Burmese teak shelf and things like that. Um, 
it's a really a nice sleeping area here. I, this is when I go cruising with owners quite often, what I'll do. Also, it's a good storage spot for a lot of folks. Yeah, exactly. It's a dual right. purpose.